Hey there, my name is Clara and I'm a PhD student at ETH Zurich. And today I'll be presenting our work titled Analyzing Wrap-Up Effects Through an Information Theoretic Lens. So first I'll give some background on what this paper is about, studying and better understanding the process of reading. Now, a lot of research in psycholinguistics has confirmed that language processing is incremental in nature. In the context of reading, this implies that readers process text one word at a time, which in turn means that we can take per word reading times in self-paced reading or eye tracking studies as a direct reflection of the processing load of that word. Importantly, this operationalization of processing load as reading times allows us to identify relationships between a word's attributes, such as surprisal or length, and its processing load, which can give us a better understanding of the underlying cognitive processes involved in comprehension. Now, a good deal of prior work has done just this, uh, specifically studying the relationship between a word's surprisal and its processing load, where surprisal is otherwise known as information content and formally defined as the negative log probability of a word given the prior centennial context. Now, essentially, these works are trying to quantify how our prior expectations can affect our ability to process a linguistic signal via the existence of some formal method mathematical relationship between surprisal and processing load. Now, while there's been a good deal of empirical evidence that surprisal estimates serve as a good predictor of word level reading times, um, often in these studies, words at the end of a sentence and even clause uh, are excluded with researchers giving the reason that wrap-up effects serve as a confounding factor. So what are wrap-up effects? In short, the term wrap-up effects describes the cognitive processes that happen at the end of a sentence or clause. In comparison to sentence medial words, these final words are associated with increased reading times, as shown by our graph here. This behavior suggests that the cognitive processes for sentence final versus sentence medial words may be different. Now, there are a few hypotheses as to which processes are potentially the cause of wrap-up effects. These include things like the construction of interclause relationships, or uh, attempts to resolve previously postponed comprehension problems, or optimizations, such as the drive to avoid uh, having to return to the clause later when inconsistencies in comprehension pop up. But it's quite difficult to test these hypotheses in a causal manner, as it's hard to control for confounding factors in reading time studies. But luckily, we have lots of naturalistic reading time data readily available, and we can perform a number of analyses that would either support or provide evidence against these hypotheses. Specifically, we can look at the relationship between text information theoretic attributes and its observed wrap-up times, where these information theoretic attributes can indicate different characteristics of the text. For example, high surprisal words in the preceding context may indicate the presence of ambiguities in text and uneven distribution of surprisals and sentences may correlate with complex linguistic structures or relationships of uh, the current text with prior sentences. Thus, we can use this type of analysis to gain a better understanding of what processes are involved in sentence wrap-up. So this brings us to our analysis. Let's start with the standard paradigm for modeling the relationship of reading time and by proxy processing effort with information theoret theoretic attributes of text. So effort is typically modeled uh, as a linear function of a word's surprisal, along with the previous word surprisal to account for spillover effects. There are often a few other predictors included, such as word length or unigram frequency. Now this setup works quite well for modeling sentence medial words, as suggested by the evenly distributed residuals, uh, which is the blue density of such a model. Yet there's something amiss when this model is used to predict sentence and clause final reading times, the red densities. Clearly, the effort required in sentence wrap-up effects differs quantitatively by some factor. So we now ask if including information theoretic attributes from the whole prior context would help our prediction of these reading times. So which information theoretic attributes should we include? Here we look at a, a perhaps nonlinear function of the entire prior context information content. Specifically, we sum the exponentiated surprisals of the entire prior context, where different values of our exponent have different implications. The case of k equals zero simply returns the length of the prior context. The case of k equals one returns the total information content of the string up to that point. 
And when we start to look at k greater than 1, uh, then high surprisals in, double, in w uh, will disproportionately drive up uh, the value of our predictor. Thus, how well our predictor as a function of k um, models sentence and clause final reading times may indicate which attributes of prior text, if any, can be linked to the additional cognitive processes involved in wrap-up effects. So here, we measure the effectiveness of a predictor as the change in log likelihood of a held-up test set that it incurs. Uh, these graphs show this change when predicting data from various reading time corpora as a function of k, using several different language models to estimate surprisal values. When predicting clause final reading times, as is done in the top graphs, we observe that often the additional information provided by our predictor indeed leads to better models. In most cases, our predictor at some value of k greater than zero leads to larger gains in predictive power than k equal to zero, which implies that the information content of the preceding text is more indicative of wrap-up behaviors than length alone. Further, our predictor at k equals or k greater than one uh, provides more predictive power than at k equal to one. Um, this is across the majority of data sets, and it suggests that unevenness in the distribution of surprisal or the presence of, moment, of moments of high surprisal is a strong predictor of clause final reading times. Um, yeah. Now, the same experiments for sentence medial words shown in the bottom plots indicates that these quantities are less helpful when modeling these reading times, which falls in line with prior psycholinguistic theories, such as surprisal theory. Um, notably, we see some variation in trends across the data sets. Um, we discuss this along with other trends uh, in more detail in our paper for those interested. Now, our results have several implications when considering prior theories of wrapper processes. Um, so they provide potential support, for example, the hypothesis that uh, extra time at sentence boundaries is spent resolving prior ambiguities, um, where ambiguities should correlate with higher values of our predictor. They also provide uh, some evidence against several hypotheses, like the one that uh, this difference in reading times can be quantified by a constant factor. But it seems like I'm out of time now, so with that,